cut off of nitro. As you crest the top of Nitro's lift hill, you dive down your 215 foot drop and reach your max speed of 80 miles per hour. As you fly up into a banked hill, you dive down to the left, pass over a set of fixed magnetic trim brakes and up to your main floater airtime hill. As you get a great pop of airtime, you dive to the ground, pass over another fixed magnetic trim brake and up to a very intense hammerhead turnaround. As you exit the turnaround, you fly over your final fixed magnetic trim brake and up to your second main floater airtime hill. As you drop to the ground and fly into a banked airtime hill that leads right into my personal favorite part of the ride, a super intense right-handed upwards helix. This helix sends you right into the mid-course brake run. You pass through the mid-course, get hardly trimmed, and get one final great pop of airtime. In these final run of hills give absolutely zero airtime, as they only provide a great view of the first drop and pretty much nothing else. After those few hills, you get sent right into the brakes. Nitro is a B&M hypercoaster that opened at Six Flags Great Adventure in 2001. It was not only the third B&M hypercoaster to open ever, but it was also the tallest, fastest, longest, and steepest at its opening. Nitro is New Jersey's longest coaster to date with 5,394 feet of track. It is also New Jersey's tallest, fastest, and steepest non-launch coaster. So let's get into Nitro's presentation. Nitro is located at the very back of Six Flags Great Adventure, standing tall over every coaster in that area of the park. Nitro is tucked away in the deep woods of New Jersey, so it is pretty hard to get photo and video of this ride. It also has little to no theming as it is pretty much themed to Snicker bars. So for presentation, I will give Nitro a 6.5 out of 10. Let's get into Nitro's name, logo, and theming. Nitro's theme is to pump up the human body for the awesome ride it is about to experience. As for the theming category, there is no theming. As soon as you walk under the entrance plaza, you get greeted with a sea of metal cattle pens. With the occasional sign that says that you are not yourself when you're hungry, aka go buy some Snickers and we'll make more money. As you could have probably guessed, Nitro will not be getting a high score for this category. Nitro will get a 4 out of 10. Nitro's ride experience goes as follow. You board your row, pull down your lap bar, and depart from the station. You make a small left-handed dip and start ascending your 230 foot tall lift hill. Once you crest the top, you go through a layout full of positive G's and some good strong airtime. One thing I noticed about Nitro is that it did not have a rattle at all. This was the same case for the other old B&M in the park, Batman the Ride. Nitro's ride experience is overall very enjoyable. I will give it an 8.5 out of 10. Nitro's restraints are the comfortable yet classic B&M clamshell restraints. You can also find these restraints on every one of their hypercoasters. One thing I personally enjoyed about Nitro's restraints is that there is no seat belt, just a simple lap bar. This allows you to get all of the airtime without being hampered by the pesky seat belt. The B&M clamshell is overall one of my favorite restraints, so of course I will give Nitro a 10 out of 10 for restraint category. Now let's talk about Nitro's intensity. There are three main moments of positive g-force on this ride. The first one being the extremely tight valley right after the first drop. The second one being the hammerhead turnaround and the third and most forceful one being the upwards helix into the mid-course brake run. By no means is Nitro the most forceful coaster I have ever ridden, but for a B&M it's actually pretty good. In fact, Nitro possesses the one element I have ever grayed out on, the upwards helix into the mid-course brake run. For intensity, I will give Nitro an 8 out of 10. As it does not focus on being intense or forceful, it still does a great job at it. For the second to last category, let's go over Nitro's airtime. Nitro has four main moments of airtime. Those being the first drop, main floater hill, second floater hill, and the pop off the mid-course. All of the airtime on Nitro is best experienced in the back row, especially that first drop. 
So for airtime, Nitro will get 8.5 out of 10. For our final category, let's go over length. As I said earlier, Nitro is 5,394 feet long. Its duration is 2 minutes and 20 seconds, making it a pretty long ride. Nitro is also the longest hypercoaster I have ridden to date. So, for all those factors, I will give Nitro an 8.5 out of 10 for length. Before we wrap this video up, I just want to talk about a few quirky things with Nitro. Nitro has three fixed magnetic trim brakes, and if you don't know what fixed magnetic trim brakes are, they are brakes that slow down the train to a desired speed. They cannot fully stop the train, instead only slow them down. And when a brake is fixed, that means that its only position is on, so no matter the temperature or weather, it will always be on. This can be an issue when Nitro operates in the park's Christmas event, Holiday in the Park. Nitro has valleyed on multiple occasions due to these brakes. Valleying is when a train cannot clear or crest a large hill or inversion, then it rolls back in the track and comes to a complete stop. Therefore, closing the ride for the day as riders have to be evac'd and the train winched back to the station. This also occurs in early morning test runs during the spring. Since Nitro was B&M's third hypercoaster, they have definitely learned a lot from their projects. Newer B&M hypers like Diamondback, Shambhala, and Behemoth all feature adjustable brakes instead of fixed brakes. Another issue these brakes bring is that they can make the train run extremely slowly, like frighteningly slowly that it will amaze you that it actually finishes the ride. This is a problem on other older B&Ms, but it is especially noticeable on Nitro. And with the trains running slowly, that means that dispatches will have to take longer. Not necessarily the dispatches themselves, but with trains running slow, it'll take longer for them to clear the course. This means that for Nitro's train to clear the area where it is safe to dispatch the next train, it will have to take longer, therefore making the line move slower. So that concludes this coaster review, and to answer the question in the title, do I think Nitro is overrated or underrated? Nitro is severely underrated. It is a great ride, yes it has its flaws, but overall it is a great hypercoaster. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please leave it a like rating down below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to pick up your very own Hangtime Thrills merchandise using the link in the description. Anyways, I'll see you later on Hang Time Thrills.